Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a conversation about faith, music, and culture. Join Shine.fm's ministry director, Brian McIntyre Utter, and his son, Jake, around the table for this week's chat. Welcome to The Kitchen Table. My name is Brian. And I'm Jake. And we are a father-son duo, like Batman and Robin. Like Batman and Robin. Da, 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 da. I'm Batman. I call dibs. Fine. I'm Boy Wonder. <laughs> yeah! Hey, thanks for uh, tuning in today. Uh, We we do this uh, little thing called the kitchen table where the whole purpose here is real simple. We want to encourage families to start having more faith conversations. So we are father and son, and uh, Jake went off to college a year and a half ago, but I still wanted to continue having faith conversations. And And when I went off to college, it was two miles away from where I live now. True. And this is one way I get to see him at least once a week now. Yeah, but I'll have class with you next semester. Oh, that'll be scary. So, we'll yeah. see how that goes. <laughs> you know I'm going to be harder on you. But but nonetheless, uh, this program, we start with a faith conversation, spend about 20 minutes or so just discussing all kinds of different things about faith in Christ. Uh, we move into a segment called Music Matters. We're super fans of music. We love music, and we love uh, sharing music with others. And so we each bring a song to the table, and then we also dive back in the uh, oldie but goldie bag to find one from the years gone by. And then we move into a segment we call Culture Shock. And Culture Shock, we talk about just a, a big, giant plethora of everything. We talk about just people who are making an impact in their community. So we come, we go from celebrities in Hollywood to sports players that are making an impact in their community. And then to the average Joe Schmo, as we like to call it, or as I like to call it. I feel like you don't say that anymore. Sorry. But we just like to bring light to people who are making a difference in the world today. Highlight their story. Highlight their story. Okay, I've been trying to rack my brain on what to call this topic. I don't want to offend people with the title, but this is what I think I'm coming down to. I'm calling this faith conversation, Stop Being a Stupid Christian. Sometimes you have to... You 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 just have to be blunt, right? Well, well, you have to be blunt, but then you also have to be honest. The world hates us. Not everyone, but a lot of them do. And there are good reasons, justifications, I guess, as to why some people do hate us. And so uh, we just want to say, stop being a stupid Christian. So what does that look like? What are some habits that we need to just flat out drop? Judgmentalism. Being judgmental. Now, this is the one I struggle with. Yeah. And I don't want to do it. One of the few sins that Jesus repeatedly warns his followers is not to be judgmental. But despite this, we mistakenly assume that withholding judgment is a form of accepting or condoning or even affirming sin. But judgment from Christians doesn't determine whether a particular belief, action, or lifestyle is either wrong or righteous in the eyes of God. Now, this is, this is a struggle one here for many because I honestly believe that if I have a close relationship with somebody, let's say a family member who is living in sin, out of my love for them, I want to not judge them, but to point out what they need to change mm-hmm. because I'm not going to let them live in sin and miss out on eternity. That's not it. That that's my and that should be our love for everybody. Yeah. But I think what happens is we tend to just uh, compare ourselves to them, yeah. to them being whoever. We compare ourselves to others. Mm-hmm. It's almost like this uh, holier than thou righteous attitude we have. We're all flawed. We all make yeah. mistakes. And let's face it, people are judging us as well. We all live within our tiny little fish bowls, and everyone's looking into our lives. Why do we get a bad rap? Why do, why do those that follow Christ get a bad rap about judgmentalism? I think that we get this bad rap or we get this, this claim that we're very judgmental. I think it's because of media. You know, I think that media really wants to dive into the stories of judgmental churches and Christians, especially against LGBTQ communities and just how they have this idea that the church is just hating everyone who is gay, who is lesbian, who is in that community. When out of honesty, the real church and the real Christians, and I'm, I'm not trying to say like, you're not a real Christian if you're, if you're not, if you hate them, as the Bible says, and as Jesus says, we are to love everyone, right. love your neighbor as yourself, no mm-hmm. matter if they are gay, no matter if they are African-American, no matter if they are in poverty, no matter if they are strippers, prostitutes, you know, we're supposed to love everybody no matter what. And as you said before, our love should be wanting to help them to get their eternity because we want them in heaven with us. We don't want people to suffer 
And so I think it's important to get that reminder that media is always going to be against us. They're always going to pick the, the stories of churches being judgmental and outcasting gay people in the church or anything else, you know. But we have to fight against the world and fight against this, this rep that we have that we're very judgmental people. Because out of all honesty, the church is human. Flawed. That the, the church is imperfect, and the church is a bunch of imperfect people that are trying to worship a perfect God. And so we need to remember that that we're imperfect, and so we can't judge people for that. But we also need to let, this is like for people that aren't Christians and that are like, oh, Christians are very judgmental. They need to know that we're not perfect, and we just have this like stigma where we're trying to be perfect. And so we try to hold ourselves up to this higher perfect standard but we can't without God, and a lot of people are trying to do it without God. Right. Sorry, went off a little side box That's there. okay. That's all right, man. This is where you speak your mind. Something else we need to stop doing, and I've mentioned this before on the program, it's, and it's so true. We are overcomplicating the love of Jesus. Amen. You know, there comes a point in the Christian journey when many start to feel bored, unfulfilled, dissatisfied with the unglamorous task of loving loving others. Yeah. It's very hard work to follow Jesus. Now, some people say, well, it's easy. No, it is hard work to follow Jesus. It requires us to sacrifice. It requires us to be humble, which in many ways is counterculture. It requires us to serve, to have patience, to have forgiveness, and to have a whole lot of love. And it can be tempting, and honestly, it's much easier to focus on specific parts of the Bible that don't require much endurance, if you will, that are more flashy, that will draw more attention and will instill a greater sense of excitement. So some of us create this, quote, Christian platform that becomes our passion, a political agenda, a social clause, a moral practice, a specific theological belief. That's why we have dom- denominations after denominations after denominations after yeah. independent churches after not connected churches, you know, because of this thing that we've created, right? That we've created, and that becomes our central belief to our faith, overtaking what Jesus commanded us to do, which is to love others as yourself. Yeah. So we get people who practically fight to the death over things like Calvinism, infant baptism, various other causes, various other doctrines. And in and of themselves, these things aren't necessarily bad, but everyone has their own convictions about theological issues. It's when we prioritize these things, these differences, above the love of God and sharing Christ's love, this leads to idolization. Yeah, I think it's just important to have this reminder of the love of Christ. What's yeah, uh, Where's the verse at? Love is patient, love is kind, love is does not envy, does not boast. First Corinthians 13. Yes, that. I think it's just important to remember that and just to, I, I don't know how to get it to people's heads. Love everyone because you know how much wor- better this world would be if we were love-centered instead of hate-centered? Love, compl- love centered on the love of Christ. Yeah, that's, what, that's yes. Yeah. When I say love, I meant love of Christ, did not specify. If we opened our arms instead of closing them and, and throwing the little finger wagging thing at them, this world would be completely different. It's kind of it's actually kind of hopeless because, you know, it's just you can't do it by yourself and you need the power of Christ and you need community of Christ to do that. And I feel like the community of Christ is so separated, especially with denominations. as you right, said. Right. I mean, even growing up for me, I remember, oh, they're a Baptist church. Like they're the <laughs> like I literally like thought in my head, oh, they're the enemy. And, and they're like, not at all. And they're not. And it, it, that's just, I've grown out of that. I'm obviously not that way anymore. Right. But I think it's just got this stigma around it. Oh, we're Nazarene. You're Baptist. Let's not even intermingle. Let's not even talk. And I think that's one of the broken things of this world is that we all serve the same God. We just have very picky differences on what we believe about that same God. Right. And so why are we wanting to debate and fight and destroy relationships over these tiny little picky things that we are not even going to find out until we go to heaven, if we're even right. And by that time, it's not going to matter. Yes. Again, we're talking about the topic this week of uh, stop being a stupid Christian. (laughs) There's just no other way to say it. This is the topic. And things that we need to stop doing as followers of Christ. Uh, Another thing, and this is a big one, and man, I, I, every other day, I'm contemplating whether I stay on social media or not. Yeah. But I've found out that there's these great things where you can like silence people 
so you don't have to see their stuff. <laughs> and I silence a lot of people. <laughs> it's just true. Yeah. Because I don't, yeah. But we have to stop posting garbage on social media. Yeah. The clickbait links, the offensive political memes, the self-righteous condemnation of others, you know, the bitter theological rants. And this drives me crazy. I use social media as a ministry. And so I will post twice a day to my, quote, tribe or whatever that's following me, these encouraging positive thoughts. And what I hate more than anything is that someone will come and try to theologically pick it apart. Yeah. Because that's not the reason. What you're doing is you are basically showing those because in, within my tribe on Facebook, the people that follow me, people that have been a part of my life at one point or another, I have people from the homosexual lifestyle. I have Wiccans. I have... What's a Wiccan for a Wiccan the young is, people? Wiccan is followers of witchcraft. Oh, okay. Atheist, agnostics. I've got a, a transvestite entertainer that's in the okay so these are people that i've gone to high school with or elementary school with that yeah we have experience together so they're part of my circle and i feed these messages of hope into their lives through social media but yet you have someone that comes along and wants to theologically pick it apart yeah and really it's a minute thing that means nothing in the scheme of things and i'm just like really when you post this anger this superficial, this offensive content to Facebook, to Twitter, that doesn't glorify God. So before posting anything, you have to stop and you have to think to yourself, is this true? Is it helpful? Is this inspiring? Is this necessary? And is this kind? When we start doing that, we become smarter followers of Christ. And that's what this whole topic is about today. Maybe I'll change the name of how to become a smarter follower of Christ. Oh. The rule that has saved me from putting a lot of this junk online, and it would do all Christians a world of good to carefully reflect on, is whether their social commentary is motivated by what we have talked about, the love of Christ. That becomes your filter. Is what I'm sharing on social media, is that a part of becoming who I am? And is that a part of the love that Christ has for others? Everything that's been said, I just agree. I, I agree with it. I think it's so important that we just understand that what we post, we may feel like the smallest person in the world that no one listens to us, that we have no influence. You do. You do. Teenagers, look at the way that young kids look at you in church, in school. You do have influence no matter what you think about yourself. So just to be important with it, be careful and be aware of the influence that you have. Um, one of my teachers in high school always told me, What's your circle of influence? Who influences you? And then who do you influence? Because you're always being influenced and influencing. Absolutely. Mrs. Erickson, thank you. Want she's me to ding the bell well, for her. I mean, she's not selling anything, but yeah, you can. Mrs. Erickson. There. Yeah, Mrs. Erickson. Grace Christian Academy. Great school. Something else that we need to stop doing, and it's the H word. You've heard it, it's been thrown around there. We need to stop being hypocritical. Healthy. No, it's not healthy. Dang it. You have to be healthy and not be hypocritical. So one H word, yes, one H word, no. It's easy to talk about God, to argue theological issues, to post about faith issues on all sorts of communication platforms. But in order to follow Christ, we're required to actually put our words into actions. Yeah. We must practice what we preach. You've heard that before. Unfortunately, there are too many people out there who call themselves Christian. and They talk about Christ's love without actually being loving. Meanwhile, guess what? The rest of the world is watching us and this obvious contradiction, and they simply stop listening to us. Yeah. We are causing more damage to the kingdom of God than anything else. One thing that someone always told me, the question is, what's more important? Say what you do or do what you say. And I think it's important to understand that anytime I'm asked that, I think it's both important. They're equally important. But doing what we say is the key thing. I mean, that's what's going to end the hypocritical lifestyle for Christians. Because if we say what we do, everything that we do is glorifying and honoring God. And so we need to remember that and to be aware. It's so important to know that because people are watching. It's like the, sure double, the double glass mirror, you know, they're watching you like you're in this little box because they want you to mess up because you are a Christian. You have this label of Christian on you and they want you to mess up. And it's awful because that's such a evil thing because we're imperfect. We are going to mess up. But I think if we 
break down the stigma of Christians that it sounds it sounds bad because we're striving to be like Christ more and more each day. Right. That's the goal. And so we want to be perfect and we want to be on our A game all the time and be like Christ. But the thing is, is we live in an imperfect world and because of sin and sin entered the world, we became imperfect and unclean. But at the same time, when we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, he allows us to live like Christ. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I wanted to get uh, through a couple more of these. You know the phrase, uh, they will know we are Christian by our love. Yeah. Love is a, is a verb. It's an action verb. It's not they will know we are Christian by the way we talk about love. No, but actually showing that love. So again, it goes back to the actions. The actions speak louder than the words. So if you say it, you have to do it. Yeah. Another thing we have that uh, we need to stop doing, and this might be hard for some people to say, "Ah, I'm not sure about that one, but being closed-minded. The problems that we've already mentioned before, hypocritical, posting on social media and whatnot, they're often caused by being closed-minded, not considering or acknowledging or even dialoguing with the infinite amount of diverse factors that exist beyond our own limited experiences. When cultural, ethnic, racial, social, economical, emotional, intellectual, experiential, age-specific, gender-specific factors are ignored or rejected or simply undetected, we foolishly cut ourselves off from the vast resources of wisdom and insight. Now, I'm not saying be open-minded and accept anything and everything out there. Your guide will be your guide, and when you're centered in Christ and have the Holy Spirit in your life, that will be your true north. Yeah. What you define yourself on, the direction you're going. It's vitally important to differentiate between Christ and Christian culture because they're not the same thing. Ultimately, Jesus is what Christianity is all about. It's not a political platform. It's not doctrinal disagreements. It's not online religious commentary. When all of this fails, we must do our best to emulate the life of Christ, loving the world around us the best to our ability. How do we do that? I've talked about it. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Huh. Why do people do bad things? Why do Christians do stupid stuff sometimes? If a person thinks too much about themselves, they will do many wrong things. That person will try to do whatever thing that is that makes them happy. In that situation, we're thinking about our own body and not our spirit. But a Christian has the Holy Spirit to help us. The Holy Spirit teaches the Christian's own spirit that the Christian does things that are right and good, and the Christian knows that his spirit really is important. That is how the spirit and the body can be opposites. One person may only do things that his body likes. That person may do every kind of bad thing. God's rules say these things are wrong, and people like that are not Christians. They're against God. They are against everything good. Now, the other person believes that the spirit is important. So he lets the Holy Spirit help him. And they're careful about the things that the body wants. Does not let those things rule his life. Also, the rules do not have the authority over his life. Instead, it's God's Holy Spirit who has the authority. So that person is a follower of Christ. The follower of Christ does not have to do the right things because of rules. But the Holy Spirit is in their life. And so he does those things that are good and right. Good things are going to happen because of the Holy Spirit's work in your life. Paul describes these things as fruit. Good fruit grows on good trees. A Christian loves other people. He does not do it because of the rules. He does it because the Holy Spirit has taught his spirit to do it. In other words, he does it because God is in his life. He does very many other good things too. And the good things are never against God's rules. I hate the word rules. Yeah. Now, sometimes Christians still do wrong things. We've talked about some of these. This is why we need to stop being stupid Christians. Or he thinks that wrong thoughts. Fruit needs time to grow. When a Holy Spirit is in our life, we grow. And I think that's what it is. We're not, we're not stagnant. We're not sitting in one place. You have to keep moving forward. It's like walking on the, uh, the moving walkway at the airport backwards. You know, you're walking against it, okay? Yeah. If you stop, what happens? Start going back. You start going back. That's why you're, you have to keep moving forward. Yet you're going against the current. And it's harder, but you got to keep moving forward. Fruit needs time to grow. Christians need time to learn from the Holy Spirit. So every day we are learning. Every day the Holy Spirit is showing us new things. Every day we get to know God better. And every day your love for God becomes stronger. So in order for us to, again, 
stop making those stupid mistakes that we've talked about. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we also have to realize that we're all, and I've mentioned this before, at different points on this journey in the ripening of the fruit, so to speak, since that was the illustration we used. But we have to give it time and we have to continue to have the Holy Spirit in our life to grow that, to ripen that fruit. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's hard because this world wants us to be stupid Christians because they want to prove us wrong. Um, Well, they want to hate us and we give them good reasons too. Valid. And so I think just as, like you said, I think one of the best points that you put in there is we need to keep moving forward. We need to keep striving to be the best that we can. But we also need to understand that we're not going to be perfect and we need to let others know that. We put this stigma of being perfect all the time. And so as soon as we mess up, that's when the hypocritical label comes out. And so just understanding on both sides, I think it's important. We are not immune to doing bad things. We are not above doing wrong things. But what we need to remember this is that we all need the help of God. We all need the direction of the Holy Spirit to overcome the things in our life. And when we keep him as our true north, our focus, yeah. then we won't be stupid Christians anymore. Amen. Apology to the parents who don't like us using the word stupid. <laughs> That's our faith conversation. And now moving into Music Matters. How- Music Matters. We share music. We love music. We want to uh, celebrate the generational differences in music. I have a, a new song this week. It's harder and harder because we're getting closer and closer to Christmas, and so a lot of the new stuff is Christmas, and I don't want to pull out all Christmas music just yet, right? Yeah. So I've got a new one that um, is not a Christmas song. Good. Micah Tyler. You know him? Never heard of him. Uh, we play a song on Shine called Different. I want to be different. I want to be changed. Yeah, you know that yeah, lyric? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Got a new song coming out. It's called Amen. Mike is going to tell us a little bit about the song, and then we're going to hear a clip from it. I can't tell you how many times I have overlooked and forgotten the power behind one of the most commonly used words in all of the Bible. I've stuck it at the end of prayers, thanking God for my food and when I tuck my kids in at night. But the word amen is not just the signal to let us know it's okay to start eating our dinner. No, it is a beautiful and significant way to agree and affirm the promises and authority of God. In the Bible, amen is used over and over again to mean to take care, to be faithful, reliable, or established, or to believe someone or something. And it is used all the way to the end as the last word in Revelation. I wanted to write a song that celebrates the trust God has built inside of me and also praise Him for what He is still yet to do in my life. I will never be able to get over the fact that I am loved and thought of by the God of the universe. All I can say day in and day out is simply amen. I can't get over what you've done for me. You got me singing like It's interesting. It's a little different. He's nice. I I, I like his music. Yeah. Cause he's fairly new, right? He is fairly new within the last couple of yeah. years. He was actually uh, had viral videos really before he became you know that's signed awesome. to an art uh, contract or whatever. But uh, yeah, had some fun online stuff. Yeah. So my song for the week in chapel we had praise and worship chapel, and so it's just a kind of a time to set a time of worship and just to sit back and appreciate God through music. And so it was really cool. Um, but they closed the wor- praise and worship chapel this week with "Oh Praise the Name," and I just love that song. It's a good good reminder to just, oh, praise the name in the lowest times. And this week's been a little rough. And so just to, to sit back and listen to how great our God is through music, which is my favorite way of seeing God, was a great reminder and was much needed. So here's a snippet of, oh, praise the name by Hillsong Worship. All right, another great song from those guys. That's yes. awesome. Love yeah, it. Love it. It's time now to go back in time. It's our oldie but goldie. <laughs> Going to go back to 2001. I was alive. You were alive. I was alive. You were I was two years old. No. Well, when did it come out? Well, I don't know when it came out. You were one to two years old. Yes. Uh, number one song from that year. You've heard of him. Stephen Curtis Chapman. Yeah. He has more Dove Awards than any other singer in Christian music. Been doing it for quite a while. And this is the number one song from 2001. I wanted to put in a little plug here, if that's okay. Every year we do we do an event. I'll bring it. 
Well, that was a sad. <laughs> that was a sad bell. That was a sad bing. But every year we do a, a ladies conference. We call it Ladies Day. It happens here on the campus of Olivet Nazarene University. I'm super excited about the new one coming in April because it is uh, his wife, Mary Beth Chapman, is going to be our speaker. Stephen is coming to do music, and so they're going to be together on a stage. She's speaking uh, in the morning, and then uh, they're going to be speaking together. And then, uh, of course, Stephen will be doing music throughout the day. Uh, and then in the afternoon, we'll do a question and answer with uh, both Mary Beth and Stephen Curtis Chapman. Uh, it's happening in uh, April. You're going to get details on the uh, Shine.fm website very soon. So number one song, 2001. Was that a shameless plug? For the ladies' day? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Ding. Please come. It's a great event. So, number one song, 2001. Stephen Curtis Chapman here is Live Out Loud. I know this one. This is probably the only oldie but goldie song I know. It's a great song. I love that one. It's great. Good pick. Good pick. Thank you. Well, that wraps up Music Matters. And now moving into Culture Shock. So again, Culture Shock, we celebrate people that are making a difference in the kingdom. We talk about the Joe Schmoes. We also talk about sports figures, whether it's uh, someone in the news, whether it's an actor, an actress, music people. And so uh, this week I have a couple of uh, short ones here about people that are living out their faith as an actress, actor, musician, whatever it is. The first one, we talked uh, recently and we'll continue to talk about Kanye West. Let's let's face it. He is all over the place with his new record. And uh, interesting, this week, every song off of his latest album, Jesus is King is the title of it, every song was in the Billboard Top 100 hits. Really? Every single song. Even closed on Sunday? Even closed on Sunday. Chick-fil-A. Great song. So, but he's also getting a lot of ridicule, unfortunately, yeah. from Christians. And so uh, Patricia Heaton, who is the mom off of Everybody Loves Raymond, actress, she is a, a believer in Christ. And so she had some, I guess, uh, advice for Kanye because he's facing uh, this being ridiculed for his faith. This is what she says. It says, it's very hard. I think when someone of his stature in the industry and someone who has his amount of fame makes that kind of proclamation, people then really watch and scrutinize everything he does to catch him falling down. I hope that he's able to handle that because that's what's going to happen. She goes on saying, I think that if you have the Christian perspective that this time we have on earth is actually very small compared to eternity and that our lives are so filled with non-essential information, especially with the advent of social media, there has to be someone talking about eternal things and talking about our souls and people actually are hungry for that, even if they aren't aware of it. That's another thing. Don't be a stupid Christian. Kind of goes, yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's, why, why? I don't understand that. Why are you bashing someone who is trying to share the love of God? I like I don't even comprehend how you can be mad at him for that. Right. Because he's this this, this pop star that got saved and wants to share the love. I, I don't get it. I'm literally <laughs> ticked right now. Like I just don't understand how you can be mad at him for that because he's writing music. Like if you listen to his lyrics, they're good deep lyrics. You know what I mean? Like Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm. It's gonna be okay. Calm it's, down. It's gonna be okay. But I you know what? The cool things that are happening because people are coming to his shows and raising their hand to accept Christ. Yeah. By the thousands, and now we have some Christian ministries are stepping up. They're saying we're going to provide Bibles to every one of these people. Yeah. Every one. When was the last time you heard of, of you know thousands coming to Christ like that? I mean, Billy Graham. I was like Billy Graham, probably. Or you know the apostles when the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Yeah. Thousands. Would join their number well, that day. Even like, like Justin Bieber is leading worship in the church right now. Yeah. So it's just, it, it, there's a great movement that's happening, but some Christians just cannot accept that. And I don't get how. Like, you say you want what's best for the church, but as soon as someone who was a former rap artist or a former pop artist that wasn't living a life of Christ and they come to Christ and they want to share the gifts that God has given them and share the love of God through those gifts because they have been blessed with a position of, of fame and power and they want to use that in the right way finally. Right. And as soon as they do it, they get bashed. And I don't understand. 
Okay. Sorry, I need to breathe. You need to take a breath. You see this theme that's kind of happening? Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to stop doing stupid stuff. And the way to do that is allowing God through the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and keep us focused on that true north. That's what the whole theme of this program and discussion has been about today. Live out loud. Share the love of Christ. That wraps up Culture Shock. And also brings an end to this episode of The Kitchen Table. We got a little animated today. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. You know, <laughs> we get kind of hot under the collar about certain things. Yeah. But uh, we hope you enjoyed the program. If we upset you in any way, we apologize. But Stop being all- stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we better just end it right there. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. If you want to check us out, you can check us out on the uh, Kitchen Table group. It's on the Shine.fm Facebook page. Uh, just a conversation online that happens there where uh, you can yell at us all you want on social media. We have thick skin. So, again, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. You're loved. We appreciate you. Be salty and lit. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table on the Shine.fm Podcast Network from Olivet Nazarene University. Be sure to subscribe for more content delivered each week on faith, music, and culture.